If it's Friday, this must be Owings Mills. I've been coming to the studios of Maryland Public Television to do this program almost every Friday for the past quarter century. It began as a bit of moonlighting. I was already a commentator for ABC News and continued as a full-time ABC political and economic analyst for the next three years. Since then, I've been out on my own the other six days of the week. Hi, Kelly. Hey, Lou. Owings Mills, which I like to think of as the financial nerve center of the universe, is actually a suburb northwest of Baltimore. And though I live hundreds of miles away, this building has become a sort of second home. I generally arrive in the early afternoon, and my first important job is to have lunch. Hi. Hello, Daddy. Oh, I love your outfit. Thank you. When I was a young newspaper reporter, an editor once told me that serious journalists should always order ham and cheese on rye, and thereby save their creative powers for their work. I then read every comment that viewers have sent me that week and answer as many letters as I can. We really do have the most loyal and astute audience in the world, and I always look forward to finding out what they're thinking now. Next, I work the phones and check the news a bit, work on a few future projects, and don't actually start to write that night's show until about 4.30 p.m. And yes, I do write my own stuff, every syllable of it. Whose stuff did you think I wrote? I check over the graphics for that night's show, making any last-minute changes, chat with Rich Dubroff, who has been producing the show for the past 14 years and is one of the three most conscientious people in the history of television, and around 6, begin writing that night's opening commentary. If inspiration doesn't immediately appear, I look for him in the hall. Good evening, I'm Louis Rukeyser. This is Wall Street Week. Welcome back. Hi, Mary. How are you? Meanwhile, the panelists and guests begin to arrive. While I'm typing, they're eating, having makeup applied and getting acquainted. <laughs> Natalie Seltz, our on-air hostess in the role of Miss Smith, is making them feel a little more at ease. The crew is getting ready, and so is our director, George Benham. George is the only other person besides me who has been with the show since it started, and he's been our director for 19 years. He's also an extremely conservative dresser. If all goes well, we pre-tape the show starting about 7.45 p.m. Eastern Time. Otherwise, we do it live at 8.30. If we're taping, Natalie will lead the group into the studio around 7.15. It takes me about 90 minutes to write my opening, so it's usually close to 7.30 when I finish up and pop in to get a little makeup. Please remember that there's only so much they can do with the raw material I provide. Next, it's into the studio, about five minutes before showtime. No time, of course, for anything so boring as a rehearsal. I'll quickly check my opening position and say a friendly hello to the guest, whom I will not have seen until then. For a lot of our guests, it's their first time on television and I try to make them feel at home. <laughs> Three, two, one, showtime. Okay, folks. The show itself is the easy part, and usually lots of fun. Afterward, those guests who want them get some photographs taken. Most enjoy watching the show with us as it goes out to viewers, and then we'll work on next week's program. On the weeks we use viewer questions, I'll pick them and have them sent to the panelists, who can do the necessary research instead of answering them off the cuff. Even for certified geniuses like our panelists, that's usually not a bad idea. It's generally close to midnight when I leave the building, thinking about next week's show and how we can do it better. I'm determined that we're going to go on doing it until we get it right. <laughs> 